Hey, what's up? It's Friday. Look, I tried. I put a wig on. Anyway, by the time you see this, it'll probably be Saturday, so let's just like stop saying what day it is, but it is Friday, Mus. What's up in the name of Christ? I hope you're good. It's Karabo. I hope you're stellar and in a neat bunch. Anyway, uh, just have to put a caveat, aren't they? Uh, my captions are not always accurate, so if you're always just reading them and you can hear, just try very hard to just like listen to my voice instead. But if you're deaf, I am sorry, use the YouTube captions. I like them there because they're ornate, they're animated and cute and creative. And I like being creative. So if they're inaccurate, I do apologize. Morning makeup uh, with CapCut. I'm disquieted by my skin, but it's okay. It's all right. Um, really, I'll, in I'll inherit an incorruptible body and my skin will be fixed. And if that doesn't happen fast enough, I will eventually go see a dermatologist on which day. All this will be clear. Speaking of dermatologists of which, y'all, I'm not doing this like proper. We're just not doing it. Um, deeply dark and satanic men will always gawk at me for as long as I'm in this position. So I essentially have to survive this sorrow, this poverty, and this insanity. I have to survive it. I have to get out of it before I will be left alone by filthy men. They will literally be on my neck like the craving at KFC. Or oh, is it chicken licking? You know, that ugly green orange monster. Yeah, until there is nothing that they can use in order to see if they can't infiltrate my life. And uh, this really is a discussion to women, conversation to women to say thank you very much for abandoning me at the beck and call of some pretty satanic, ominous, perverted, creepy, nefarious, beastly male individuals of a satanic nature that have been spawned through a process of metamorphosis straight from the center of hell. Thank you for throwing those at me. However, given that you've thrown them at me, today is a discussion particularly to the females. Anyway, <clears throat> my skin. You see this acne all over the show that's giving you quite, you know, the, the, the jivey groove. Understand that I had a dream also about one little devil worshipper that is looking at me thinking, but I'll take you to a dermatologist. That's just the thing. Like all this neglect by women has made men literally pick at every last thing that's falling off me and be like, I'll fix it insofar as you marry me. Hmm. So it turns out I'm apparently on auction by some of the most demonic men on earth because women have seen it fit to put me in the forefront of them okay listen up all of y'all that have put me at the forefront of men that think they can fix my skin so that one day i can be like oh if it wasn't for you my skin wouldn't have cleared no it's like dealing with the total like gangster amount of acne scarring mm. this is what i gotta say to you all of these random males ne? that are what's happening over there oh i think i know all of these random males now that are looking at this wig for instance thinking i can get you human hair i'm like dude i'm growing a mane just like this properly but like i have my scalp so all i need is just time for me to get to this place and time means patience patience of which means jesus christ eventually had my back and fixed my, my issues with hair. So one day I'm going to have some pretty awesome curls up tops because I'm growing them underneath this wig. Long story short, my reality is eventually going to catch up with how I feel inside. I feel important. I feel special. I feel like a disciple that's dearly beloved by Jesus. Mm, but it doesn't really show on the outside because I'm going through my season of testing as Job. Therefore, until such time that the reality catches up with the reality. In other words, until such time that the outward situation catches up with the true state of affairs, I might be getting some females out here throwing me like an auction item to some filthy men that might even identify that perhaps maybe I need like some false eyelashes instead of the ones that are applied by a, an application uh, for makeup and be like, I can buy you falsies, honey, without even realizing that I don't even like real makeup. Okay, right. Because it's not that good for skin, especially skin like mine. Yeah, that looks like this. We don't do makeup on acne prone skin. We just don't. Thank God that's done. Uh, guys, if I'm looking up tops over there, um, I'm trying to do edits at the same time. We're going to talk to females, okay? 
Mm, Lord God Almighty knows how to give a sister an idea or some ideas to talk to people. Ne? And we're going to talk to people. There was this jam in the country. Ooh, I'm going to. Uh, uh. There we go. Burp. We did it. Before we spoke, the Lord went before released the burp. Before it came out, just like he speaks and it happens, can't nobody go against the decree of the word of the Lord. Can't nobody come against my burp. Somebody got to release some air. And this is me releasing the air that is in my heart women i'm gonna put you in your place i don't care about your jealousy i don't care about your competitiveness i also don't care about what under heaven you imagine is your sanctimoniousness or your self-righteousness to abandon me in this position i have a bone to pick with you and a diss especially laba fazi laba that have a history of occult involvement but are no longer involved in satan worship at least at that depth there is something i gotta tell you i got a little something to tell you okay so like it's 16 27 i gotta work out at some point y'all saw me yesterday when i was working out i was looking all like out of it it's because i was i pushed myself despite a lot of severe amount of demonic attack because i'm that warrior chick i feel better today so i should be looking better today on the dance floor nonetheless uh all of that dancing has cost has caused quite a few females to want to be aja judging me because me nanya jaiva to uh, what you call secular music. Okay, fine. Mock and diss and tease me, but you will remember that I cried, and 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 I was like, there's a devil worshiper all up in my grill. Help, Batung. I'm under attack. I am severely mistreated, and there is a man that is trying to get me to commit suicide. To sang, but I was literally singing yo 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 yo. Doom 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 doom. Muzewaka wa tubeha. To sang, but I was asking for help. And these females then stood back and watched the woman literally suffocate under demonic attack 24 hours a day till I found a way to survive until further notice. And the only way that I'm surviving out here with the resources that I have is through exercise. And the exercise that I do, I cannot do it with any other music because it's dance. Other than secular music i literally have no other way around it so i try to take out the sound right what is this the lyrics um i try to manipulate sound in such a way that you don't hear the lyrics you just hear pretty much the instrumental um in the background and some squeaky little voice talking uh and then i, I dance right i have cleaned up my dance i have put clothes on my body to make sure that i'm not stumbling to anybody but because i'm actually talented that's just the problem if i was out here moving left to right looking like i've got two left feet okay you wouldn't have a problem with it the issue you have ladies is the fact that i can actually dance yeah i can actually dance because i am an actual dancer i have skill i have talent and so out of envy you are thoroughly accusing me of being worldly when the music if at all you didn't recognize it because you also come from the world if you did not recognize those songs you wouldn't even know which song it is you wouldn't hear the lyrics you would just be hearing that's all you would be hearing so essentially a person that's never listened to secular music in their life before never heard any of these songs wouldn't even know what in the world i'm dancing to they wouldn't even know because i i, I, I mute the sound in a way so it has to take out all the lyrics and all you have is the instrumental and the woman standing in front of you is fully clothed and dancing in a way that is responsible i am incorporating squats lunges i am incorporating fire hydrants if i can pretty much all the rote mundane moves that you would do in a gymnasium where you are squatting doing a deadlift whatever but instead of me doing it in a very boring way where it's like one lunge one squat one uh, uh, crunch one whatever i'm dancing so i dance the squat in i dance the lunge in i deliberately go out of my way to make sure that i do very deep squats low squats to get to certain muscle groups but i'm kind of fluid in the way i do it because i'm dancing so any other woman just doing a regular pita party people up down five squats you wouldn't have a problem with but you have a problem with me because i'm dancing and you want to claim that i'm sensual you also want to claim that i am dancing to licentious music or music that is worldly when i have gone out of my way to literally tweak and change that music so as to not stumble anyone listening to it because of the fact that i understand that i am a christian and i'm doing christian ministry there is n anybody at all that would come into my ministry having never heard a single secular song in their life wouldn't even know what those songs are they wouldn't even know what the lyrics are they would just be hearing pretty much an instrumental with a squeaky voice and unable to um gauge what the words it's it's what i did i literally went out of my way to make sure that that's a thing 
but women women in particular the lord has shown me a whole audience of them sitting around on some she's worldly you're jealous you are jealous in the literally center of a woman that was about to die from suicide because she kept getting attacked by some monster and the only way out the lord told her was work out so you can get dopamine endorphins all the stuff in your body that you might have a natural chemical that is counteracting depression that's how you're gonna get out of this so i danced and now i am conquering so much so am i conquering that this is a sick little coven full of dirty filthy men into trying to force me to marry them they are, don't know what to do with themselves they're literally running around on the spot spinning trying to hook up new spells saying but this doesn't work this doesn't work i am conquering so heavy and so hard knock as a spiritual warrior conquering even your ananias and safira disposition in other words your uh neglect of me you just stood back and did nothing when i was crying that a man is putting me at the precipice of suicide that's what's good yeah you sat back and did nothing until i found a way to survive whatever this little menace in america was doing to me and some other covenant in south africa and all of those screams and cries that i was standing on the rooftops you were privy to them you sat back and hoped that i would survive and guess what i did ladies i survived i survived and instead of being happy cheering because what you call a sister in jesus christ survived a suicide curse you are out you're hating on me calling me worldly i'm sorry this is what's going to be happening at the bema seat of jesus christ the lord is going to tell you where to get off in the same way that i'm currently telling you where to get off where were you where were you seeing as you were out here judging my daughter for surviving a suicide curse that you did nothing about where were you when she was nearly about to freaking kill herself where were you absolutely nowhere this is the way that i am surviving and like i said i put clothes on my body i am not stumbling the only thing that might stumble you is jealousy because that's just what happens when a person does really well if i could sing like an opera singer to a point where i could break a glass when i'm reaching those high notes there would be somebody envying that and so therefore say that i'm busy i'm basically noisy in the room breaking the eardrums of some children somebody would have something to say when they're jealous the bible says anger is overwhelming and fury is a flood but who can stand before jealousy envy will call will make you call me sensual envy will make you call me worldly when i am obviously working for jesus and envy will also make you somehow substantiate why you had to stand back and do nothing for me so in retrospect or rather in like some when you think back about having disregarded my cries for help now you are standing where you're standing saying feeling good about having not done nothing for me because you are literally thinking that jesus is sitting in heaven thinking that Carabo, you are basically departed from me and disqualified in accordance to the faith because you're dancing to uh who is that beyonce never mind beyonce i was actually thinking uh that, that, that other white girl with a small little nose that's very skinny yeah okay the skinny guy not katie perry but the other one yeah because you're dating to you're not dating but dancing to her music and my thing is okay uh let me just save this before i Taylor Swift, that's the woman whose name I was looking for. You're not even taking into consideration that even the music, Ega Taylor Swift, that I choose to dance to, if it is Taylor, for that moment, I am careful to make sure it is clean, that there is no profanity in it. I'm not going out of my way to find some profane, hard knock rap song that's going to be calling women the B word and using the P word all over the show and just basically ransacking my own eardrums. I'm even careful in choosing the music that I dance to, whether or not it is secular. So what I'm trying to come here and lament about concerning Abafazi. Literally, and let me sing you that South African song, Vavas J, where were you? Where were you when I was at the height of suicide ideation? Where were you when some menace in America was ransacking my life so hard knock and so bad? Do you understand? Uh, 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 what are you, what's going on? Uh, exactly, listen to that. Uh, I'm doing an edit right now, right? Uh, it's perfect that's coming on. Okay, I'm busy uploading that particular short on you on Facebook. So it is ideal that you got to hear that, right? That is Yemi Alade's um, bomb bomb or tom bomb or whatever, right? But you don't know that, especially those that are sitting in America. You highly likely do not know much of Yemi Alade's music, right? Especially when she is singing in her own language in her nigerian dialect whatever it is right so if you do not know the song how is it going to stumble you you just know it's an african song you can tell more or less from this from the uh, what is this instrumental but you cannot tell that it is that is yummy yummy aladay song and you can't even tell you can't tell i had to be the one to tell you that that's what it is all right and then you stand outside and you feel good 
about having neglected me better not good okay let me not accuse you of feeling good because that might just be a little bit unfair but you feel better about standing back and doing nothing when a woman was at the very end of her life i literally nearly died at my own hand because i kept on getting sent a, a barrage of death curses from some filthy animal in america and some coven in south africa and i kept on saying the occult is trying to kill me the occult is trying to kill me you don't want to believe me and then when i went and embarked on a strategy that has always worked in this season of suffering the only thing that's ever worked is a combination of ministry talking rapping on chatting over here um and also dance we're working out working out a combination of working out and basically sitting on my own therapist chair to talk sense into the situation that i am facing has worked for nine years but for about a year i neglected one segment of that which was exercise and it nearly killed me and when i went back i literally got shown by the lord a barrage of especially crazy women that have been following me and out of envy literally reduced me to some woman in the world that is lost wait again can can we just have a a look at biblical persecution first and foremost my phone is so hot i really hope it does not um die on me because i don't have an alternative device where i'm recording right now i'm just trusting that because the weather has cooled down and it's night it's not going to continue in this ridiculous trajectory but nonetheless uh biblical per persecution let us think about why in the world under heaven what what it is that i am going through why am i going through it my life am i a woman utterly and, and, and just entirely deserves violently abandoned by everyone she's ever loved looked at by no one but filthy men perverts basically a candidate for human trafficking because i dance to secular music for real seriously i mean let's think about it this way imagine a what like there was a show on i believe it's currently on netflix right now it's a movie called room uh, an uh, award winner of sorts and i do believe it's based on a true story of this one woman that was kidnapped by some pervert and put locked in a basement for years and raped repeatedly to, until she had like a a, a son or, or a daughter with this like pervert that uh, kidnapped her from the age of like 16 or whatever and kept her for years until she was like in her mid-20s now if that woman so that she would survive suicide in the small little room that she is in with no other resources at her disposal she's got nothing else she cannot she does not have options there is no diversity of choice concerning what she can do in this four by four room but she is not trying to kill herself because she's got hope that one day God is going to come through for her and there will be a rescue effort. And when then she has been rescued, she will focus on doing things the way that she would much rather do them. So restricted and limited. Then this woman finds a little radio in a corner and then finds a CD and the only CD in this radio that is in there. And it's like heavy metal music. And she decides that she's going to dance to it every single day so as to conquer the depression that is in her brains that she doesn't have to think because she loves dance she remembers she's always been a dancer and is the one thing that always set her free it's the one thing that made her feel really good but the last time she danced she was in the world or rather last time she danced she was a happy woman she was not a kidnapped girl trafficked by some animal in a basement but it's all she could do and so when then she's doing this thing to survive and her little abuser walks into the room finding her dancing to heavy metal music then salivates then starts to basically get sexually aroused by her when he's looking at her from the keyhole of this room would you accuse this woman of seducing her rapist would you accuse her of seducing a rapist or would you say she is trying to survive and some filthy animal that is a psychopath thoroughly made a decision to go on right ahead and lust after her in that position you cannot call me a woman that is stumbling men that are looking at me through a keyhole in their perverted mindsets do you understand what i'm saying when i am trying to survive with the radio i found in the room that i am in having been kidnapped and i'm trying to survive to get to the day when i can finally get out of here and so therefore no longer be salivated after by those who are opportunistic or men who are full of exploitation there is which what show is this that i was watching um yeah back when i was watching blacklist i stopped watching it because it just got too dark for me on netflix there is a um a criminal there in in the and no it wasn't blacklist i think it was blacklist in the underworld um no it could have been some other crime show i don't know i can't recall but one of the criminals in question that were being dealt with was off this pastor guy a preacher no it was not blacklist it was something else he was like a a preacher 
serial killer right i'm wondering what was it blacklist what was it no it was some crime show that i was watching on netflix right and the story was of uh, some preacher pastor guy that had become a rapist and serial killer of women what it is that converted him to catholicism he was a catholic pastor or uh, was basically his struggle with lust as a child when he was a boy child he struggled with lust and he was not the most handsome boy in the school and so the girls used to reject him therefore all the hot girls in the school that he lusted after always passed him shade and they always gave him bad energy back in response in, in return they never reciprocated feelings for him and this in, in, in embarked him on such an angry journey he was so mad at women for what he called turning them on so you all you had to do in the presence of this animal was be beautiful have a, a particular personality you know be coy dainty the things that girls just generally do when they're not busy suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder if you know what i'm saying like just being a girly girl and then some dude has a crush on you because they like how girly you are but this dude instead of him being a regular dude that has a crush on a girl that's being dainty and typically very girly he developed a perversion in that regard because they were he was very rejected by these women he would smile at them they wouldn't smile back they would ignore him completely sometimes they wouldn't even know he's in the room they wouldn't even know he's in the room and feeling ignored by these women he then decided that look he needs to brittle his lust because he can't quite lay with every woman that he wants to be with plus he imagined it as a sin to go and fornicate and what have you so he turned over to catholicism right the catholic priesthood then trained him uh, if you become a catholic pastor you cannot have sex at all you have to basically to take out a vow of celibacy uh he made a decision to do this vow of celibacy unfortunately however for this little bugaboo right he then went on right ahead to lust after women wearing clothes from tip to toe like covering their whole bodies nuns the nuns in the convent where he was working he then salivated after them despite them being completely robed entirely robed you know how nuns be they be covering everything except just a section of their faces mm. looking like women in the middle east and he somehow managed to salivate after one particular nun who had teeth that were too sexy i guess or cheeks that were too sexy and then he raped her after raping her he then killed her and that was the beginning of his spree as a serial killer so now this man ended up basically being this like prolific murderer any woman that he felt turned him on that nun apparently had it coming why because she was kind to him she was sweet but just like the girls in high school that kept on rejecting the living daylights out of him they would smile at him and be fresh and so he would think hmm, she likes me and then next thing when he's all up and like trying to touch her and grab her she's like no i did like what are you doing and then he's like how dare you seduce me with your smile seriously that is a psychopath that is a psychopath you know what i'm saying like how dare you seduce me for smiling at you i'm being kind that's all that that is when a person has a deep sexual perversion in them you do not go on right ahead and accuse the woman for seducing them you don't do that it's irresponsible it is entirely irresponsible to do that this man then not only went on to murder a nun after fleeing from the convent that where he killed a nun and so he couldn't get found he went into hiding and in hiding he then slew slayed like a whole bunch of other women women in his hotel like uh like what is this like the maid in his hotel room wound up one of his victims some girl that he was chatting with in an airplane at the airport ended up being his victim what did these women do absolutely nothing one lady was talking to him gently and kindly and having compassion on him for his issue and then after at the end of the conversation she decided to hug him and because she hugged him he imagined her as one who is assaulting him and seducing him she hugged him because she felt his plea and the hug was neutral and he made a decision that she had to die she was actually the woman that got saved at the end of the day there's always a woman that they save or a victim that they rescue that the police basically break down the doors and rescue this one black lady became the rescue victim who survived a, a serial killer that had killed all his other victims and when you look at all of these other victims they tended to be beautiful women and one was like a an engineer the other was a scientist nothing of them they were not only fans models they were just regular girls that however turned a man on who has a deep perversion that cannot even be blinked at by a woman and not get turned on and then feels offended when these women reject him and then he kills them that's the kind of eyes those are the kinds of eyes that i have drawn to myself and my poverty have may has made me an even deeper victim so for those reasons when i work out like any other fitness mod like dancer on uh youtube anybody else that, da that that dances for fitness or squats or anybody that does fitness you don't even have to be dancing just a regular squat you will have some salivating perverts looking at you 
You will have, even you could be wearing a parachute. As a woman, you could, your smile alone, like I said with that nun that uh, basically apparently afflicted this fake preacher. She was fully clothed in nun clothing. Nonetheless, she, oh, she was awarded selepe on her neck. She was awarded murder for merely just having features of a woman, having the, the, the shape of a woman. The, the softness of a woman's face, the softness of a woman's smile, the sparkle in the eyes of a woman when she smiles, when that turns a pervert on, when she's done nothing at all. You do not get to blame the woman. You do not get to blame. These are the kinds of things that get women abused in the world. These are the kinds of things that cause a whole man cave of misogynistic idiots to say she called it upon herself. Like proper, imagine a little girl on a playground wearing shorts because that's what little girls wear, shorts. Do you understand? Not, nobody should be finding or salivating after a little girl wearing shorts, running around, running around. And every time when she runs, her, the wind blows her top up. And so you see her big stomach. You know how they've got Nikara, these little girls. And then this man is like, this child is showing me her body. Are you serious? It's a little girl. It's a little girl. Those shorts, the one leg of the shorts can fit on your arm. The way that you're so big. There is nothing sexy about that. You do not find a baby's naked body sexy. That's why babies, baby girls can be changed their diapers by their dads. That's why baby boys can be changed their diapers by their moms. That's why baby boys up to a certain age can even shower and bath with their mom. Or they're, they're the two siblings that are baby boy and baby girl. Up to a certain age, you can bath them together. Up to a certain age. It's because there just is nothing sensual or ought not be anything sensual about kids at that age. But there will be somebody who will be turned on by that. So are you going to tell me that that little girl had her coming when she's wearing shorts on the school playground as she's jumping up and down on the jungle gym? Or oh, is the problem here the pedophile? Exactly. So go grab the imagery, the same story with the pedophile, and then take a man with an extreme sexual perversion over looking at a woman that is exercising online. And I'm not talking about these uh, fitness gym bunnies of 2023. I am not talking at this point about these fitness gym bunnies of 2023 that will rock a, what do you call this thing? Like a, a, a leggings that have got a stitching in the center of the butt to basically isolate the two different body cheeks and then go to the gym wearing that. It's like wearing a G-string for crying out loud. That's irresponsible. Well, these gym ladies, these gym chicks all over the show or on the internet. No, that's just wrong. But a woman that's going to be wearing tracksuit pants and maybe just a, a loose fitting you know just to make sure that she uh, but every so often when she raises her hand in a particular way you can see the sports bra underneath or if at all it comes off her shoulder a little bit and you see her sports bra and she's lifting weights look a woman that works out and takes care of her body will always be attractive to some men whether or not she's wearing a parachute at the gym or is barely dressed like these gym bunnies that you find all over the internet next thing they'll be blaming men for some issues uh, but the responsibly dressed ones even I would even go so far as to say the ones that are wearing just a crop top and some leggings and they are showing you how to work out like this and like that but they're not going out of their way to show you every crack and crevice and every nook and cranny of their bodies what in the world under heaven are you doing accusing these women of calling it on themselves when they are showing people how to be fit what in the world under heaven are we supposed to do nah hey I take it even one step further where I don't wear crop tops I take it one step further and cover up my whole body I wear patched king if I'm wearing just a shirt tights like is it lycra and nylon sheer the tight eh? you get my point in south africa we call them the tight i don't know like what in the world you would call them overseas um yeah like regular gym tights okay yeah those when i wear them i put shorts on top of them to make sure that like the definition of my my glutes and my whatnot does not come out and it doesn't show otherwise i could just wear them alone i know of a christian woman who does fitness and she is doing fitness for christ that's literally the name of her channel and she's fully clothed and she wears tights and tops that cover her stomach and everything but the tights are such that you can actually see the definition on her body she does not put anything on top of that and i still find her content appropriate i still but however now went out of my way to even put shorts on top of those tights i never would wear tights alone by themselves i always put shorts on top and for crying out loud despite all these efforts i'm making i am being looked at by women in particular i will not blame men at this particular instance women are looking at me on some she's worldly she's carnal carnal the reason why you're giving me grief is because my way of working out is a talent my way of working out is a talent let us just confess regular exercise is not in and of itself a talent unless you're a bodybuilder it is just you lifting dumbbells at the gym a kettlebell it is you using circuit training it is you doing uh pilates as a talent 
you know you like doing zumba is a talent doing the cha-cha whatever that is a talent but a regular squat or a regular jogging on the treadmill that's not a talent that is something that you cultivate over time to get stronger and better at but it's not really a talent a talent is singing a talent is dancing a talent is baking that is a talent do you understand what i'm saying well i work out with a talent i work out with a talent and my talent is dance so precisely because i am not standing and sitting on a treadmill telling you do these many reps walking and this these many reps jogging slowly and then speed up and then go back down again because that's not the way that i'm doing fitness you are properly trying to accuse me out of covetousness of my talent of of all different kinds of random strange stuff like a woman can never dance guys the thing about talents is they will always draw attraction from a person a person that can sing really well let me let me find a guy on the internet that sings that does covers that i have an attraction to because of how well he sings um his name is called joseph solomon all right largely joseph solomon's covers are um he does do covers to secular music but he tends to keep it clean uh clean of profanity clean of whatever and he's extremely gifted and because of his giftedness you will literally develop a crush on some Ooh, if a man could serenade me like with a voice like that i'd feel really blessed so if then you can develop a crush on somebody because of how well they sing then it means that a talent can be covetable that way it can draw emotions it can inspire a certain uh, set of feelings in you because of a person being that good at doing it so if you can beatbox if you can sing if you can do poetry and so inspire stronger emotions towards yourself because of that gift and talent then it means that there is potential to feel hostile feelings towards a talent if at all they're not positive if it's not romantic interest because a guy can sing really well it could be jealousy because he's not your guy and then on that day when it's jealousy you start to say stupid stuff like you can't even sing and on top of that he's singing secular music you end up hating on it because of covetousness jealousy is the thing that inspires you to wreak havoc and so with me because i exercise using a talent every so often it inspires what do you call this jealousy the jealousy of which then when you are jealous of somebody you will literally manufacture all different kinds of tall tales against them to try and justify why under heaven it is that what they're doing is dumb uh dance is a talent and when you i personally really love dance and so every so often when i watch dancers dance my emotions get spurred up it is my gift it's my talent it's what i'm drawn to it's like it's what i like watching and music too singing i've got musical gifts so i am drawn to people with musical talents so i love music musicians i love music and i also love dance and i love dancers but i am able to discern when a dancer is getting out of line in the name out of line in a lot of the the, the image of jesus so there's a lot of sensuality in the dance industry uh, women basically the, the going up and down a pole stripping and claiming that it is fit for children to consume because it's on youtube type thing there is a differentiator between those and then there are these very interesting moves that are done by all of these fully clothed generally innocent kids on tiktok and when they are moving you can be like oh that's such a cool move huh oh, that's such a cool move so i go out of my way to find dancers to look at on the internet that are not going out of their way to be sensual one such dancer that i keep watching the content of in order to basically cleanse the sensuality out of me because i used to be very sensual um because i'm inspired by the way that she dances because it's not it's not grieving it does not make you feel like oh my goodness like stop hurting god because she's just moving in a way that is obviously very talented uh first of all um there, there are two groups of people the first uh, person is what's her name taylor pierce she does these very rigid uh dances like sort of kind of lo like looking like a robot taylor's not sensual even in the slightest even in the slightest but she is skilled very skilled to a point where as a woman you would covet her you would be jealous and if you're jealous you're gonna go on and say i suka she can't move well i don't know what the what's the point over here or you'll come up with some accusation of sorts but i like taylor because when i watch her i don't get stumbled to copy or follow something that might grieve the heart of god dances from the lord so too is singing music all these things it is when the devil perverts them that things then become problematic so i have cleaned up who i watch i've stopped watching alia and alia janelle and other such dan dancers and i've started watching dance that i can basically basically consume that is not going out of its way to arouse people sexually but they're just like walking in their craft as dance and that's what i watch to try and copy to make sure that i keep it clean i, I literally go out of my way to try and keep it clean i i, I don't pride myself in twerking you would not ever see me twerking you would never like proper like i try 
really hard uh, another bunch of kids that uh, i like to watch the content of uh, or dancers okay, but the, the, what do they call them annalise world annalise world is another bunch of dancing people that are clean they're clean but they're really good but the, and the thing about annalise world is you would envy them if you don't have self-control you would covet how well they dance and then start to tease and mock them for a myriad of reasons even though it's clean dance it is properly clean dance. I go out of my way to look for clean dance. And just because somebody is really skilled at what they do does not make them offensive to God. The Lord is the one that gave us all of these gifts and all of these talents. So it would be foolish for you to imagine that God Almighty is only content with the gifts that he has given to the human race being used for the kingdom of darkness. God does not want all of his musicians being Beyonce. God does not want all of his dancers being Aaliyah Janelle. God or Nicole Kirkland. God does not want uh, all of his, um, you know, what is this, like actors being, give me some actor and fellow actress that's always acting in some shoddy underhanded roles. The Lord wants creative gifting in the kingdom of heaven because like I said with Joseph Solomon, when a person is so incredibly gifted in a particular thing, they can spur up emotion. Emotion is God. God is emotional. He created music that we might cry over it. He created talents that we might look at somebody singing and cry when we when we um hear them sing. Whenever a person, I love music so much and singing that whenever I hear a really good voice, when a, a person is doing a cover and their voice is really good, I get goosebumps and sometimes I even like trickle a tear down my eye. It's because of the fact that I am musically charged. It's the gift that I have. So do you seriously think that God wants me to be bland, rote, mundane? Do you seriously think that God wants his extremely skilled um, people of the earth that he created in his own image to only be like all of them usurped by Satan? All of them. The only really great choreography, the only really good choreography that's incredibly inspirational can only belong to dancers gyrating for some licentious song done by Beyonce. Are you seriously of the imagination that God is content that he created human beings with all these gifts that they might all be used for the devil? I'm sorry. Good craft, good giftedness in delivery of a craft is from God. And so Christians should do everything in their power to launder whatever gifts they have that they might be suitable or make fit for the kingdom of heaven and if you do that you display that excellent music and excellent dance does not only belong to hollywood that's what i'm trying to explain to you guys so you cannot accuse me of stumbling people because literally in comparison and while i should not be comparing myself to anyone in the world if anything i'm comparing myself to a christian woman a christian woman that i found online whose content is to do fitness for christian women she dresses just the way that i dress the only difference between the two of us is that she does regular road mundane exercises with no music whereas i dance because that's what works for me there is also another woman that's got like over a million subscribers that does fitness and it is clean it is clean and she also every so often dan does uh, dances sorry to gospel music um she does dance and road to depends and uh, mixes i don't know what her name is but i don't think that god is upset with that woman because of the fact that what do you call this uh Every so often she wears, what do you call this, like tights? Uh, what do you call this thing? A sports bra. Like I personally would not be content with wearing a sports bra with nothing on top of it because I feel like that's not being modest enough. But I don't think that that woman is going to be getting a gavel of sensuality slapped on her for her fitness content, all of it. If at all she makes it to heaven because she claims to be a Christian. I do not believe that the Lord is going to give her that grief over that thing because of the fact that talents don't belong to the devil all of them like if you are going out of your way to praise god and glorify his name and make it clear that this is done in his name for crying out loud it doesn't mean you have to be rote mundane boring rigid uh, two left feet unable to bounce a basketball at all you can't have any talent if you're a christian how many Christians are busy praying on sporting fields in the world today that are being mocked and teased and dissed for saying the name of Jesus on the sporting field. Extreme left in America or wherever it is that they might find themselves in the world. Everywhere. But bottom line is, with train making that analogy, explaining that is to make it clear that there are Christians in some of the most talented professions in the world. And they're, give, they're being given a hard time for being Christian. So what makes you think that being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ means you gotta be talentless? If you're a poet, you have to be substandard to the best poets of the earth that are busy doing poetry for the devil. No, the Lord is the one that gives gifts and we have to use those talents for him. So if I'm doing poetry in Christ, you can't give me grief. Like for instance, uh, let me just save.